Vroom, vroom, Marco. <laughs> you beat me this time. I did beat you this it's time. All, it's all about the car vroom, first. vroom, first. I know. <laughs> when we do the chats on the road, sure. it's about vroom, vroom. Although, as I said before, and I will say many other times, this time we're not driving. We're going to fly know. there. So I don't know if vroom, vroom is still part of it, but I guess good. Yeah, it's still an engine. I still, <laughs> I hope it's not the same engine of the if, car. If I'm controlling the engine, it's another <laughs> another story. But uh, oh my god, that's right. I'm not that's right. A plane. Yep. Actually, that's not true. Yeah, I was on a holiday once, and the guy said, "Do you want to fly the plane?" I'm like, "All right." Ask the eight people behind did? us if they care. <laughs> You're not going to fly the plane when we're together. I can assure no, you that. I can tell you that. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, this is probably some rules in this country for that. Look, it doesn't matter how you get to Vegas. You can walk if you want to, although I do not recommend that. It's quite hot in the desert. Um, you can drive, you can fly, you can bike. And uh, the important thing is that you make it a black hat. You get there, you you get there by August 3rd for the trainings and uh, stay for the briefings. That's the, that's the main thing. Yep. So this is uh, our really a traditional conversation. Yes. It's a tradition for sure. It's uh, we were just talking with Steve Wiley before we start recording on how this is our ITSP Magazine tenth birthday, which Ooh. is always marked by Black Hat USA. And like Steve, you've been uh, you've been there about the same uh, amount of time. Yeah, I think our, our birthdays um, roughly coincide. I started with my, my first Black Hat was uh, 2014. So uh, roughly about the same time. We're 10 years in, 10 years older. But Hopefully Black 10 Hat years wiser. 10 years wiser. Yeah. yeah. Black Hat <laughs> goes way back. <laughs> yeah, so this is actually our 28th year of Black Hat. So it goes back to 1997. And sometimes, you know, all of our archives are on our, our website. Sometimes I enjoy going back through some of those early yeah. events and seeing some familiar faces. I mean, I, I can't tell you how many times I've been at Black Hat and someone will come up to me and say, I was at the first Black Hat, you know, and, wow. and it's always been in Vegas, right? Um, uh, always been there alongside DEF CON. So it's, um, yeah, 28 years of uh, Black Hat history there, which is pretty remarkable. Yeah, it's uh, super cool, and not as with uh, a lot of things in tech, constant change as well. A lot of growth, I should say, as well. And uh, I see we'll get into some of this, I'm sure, but I, I see new summits this year and micro summits and all kinds of fun stuff. So we're gonna we're gonna get into that. But um, kind of give us an overview, Steve, of what uh, what folks can expect this year, the big picture. Yeah, big picture. So um, one thing's for sure, it'll be hot. Um, that's the consistent factor with <laughs> Vegas that we've you know grown to know and uh, expect. So uh, I'm just looking at the weather here: 108 degrees Fahrenheit, Fahrenheit in in Vegas. So definitely. Um, you know, dress dress accordingly. Um, but the event, the Black Hat event itself, you know, there's a lot of new things. So I, I would say, kind of at a high level, um, expanded content program and you mentioned the summits there's all we're doing a lot sort of on the what's effectively becoming a third day of the event um, i mean the i mean the overall event is six days when you include all the training programs and everything that we do but the the conference itself is, is a two-day conference but we've been gradually and, and taking more deliberate step this year into a third day there'll, there'll be the tuesday before um, the briefings and the and the business hall open up so we've got a lot of things happening um, there I would say another, um, which I'm sure we'll talk about, um, some other things that I'm uh, excited about this year is just a lot more networking opportunities. I mean, we consistently hear from our, our attendees and their feedback that they love, you know, the LobbyCon, um, and they want more time for interacting and more opportunities to um, engage with like-minded people, et cetera. So we're doing a lot of things in that regard. Um, We've got this, you know, meetup lounge, which we had last year as well, but we've just broadened out the the lineup in there where you can meet and greet with um, selected speakers, you know, some more notable speakers that you know, people will want, would love to have a sort of a more intimate uh, exchange with um, taking place in the meet and greet lounge. We're doing track chair meet and greet so you can talk to the folks that organize the track um, and understand a little bit more about kind of what they were seeing and key themes and um, and that sort of thing. So a lot more of that sort of, you know, planned and unplanned networking opportunities. 
Uh, we've got our, our our day zero program, which is that happens on the day before um, the main event, and that's sort of a an introduction to Black Hat and a great opportunity, especially for newcomers to the event, to really acclimate themselves to what the event entails and you know how to how to spend their time to make the most use of their time there. So that that's back again this year. You know, we we change that up each each year, try new things. So um, all in all, just a lot of uh, great uh, opportunities to connect with others. Yeah, you got the know before you go. I'm looking on the website because it's important. It's, it could be intimidating. I always remember the first time that Sean dragged me there and I was like, uh, okay, where are we going now? Yeah. <laughs> and, <laughs> and it's been growing and growing and growing since. So what's, uh, what do you think that is, uh, the, the, what are you really excited this year compared with uh, last year? Is it the theme? Is it the, the conversation that, uh, that you know are going to happen? Or what, what is it? Yeah. So, you know, I've done this with you guys a few times. So I've kind of you know generally kind of the direction you're going to go. And I will spend a lot of time <laughs> on the on the Black Hat website preparing for this, uh, this conversation. And um, yeah, I mean, I, I always, you know, you guys know me, I will always come back to the content program. It's what Black Hat's known for, right? So that's the generally is always the part that I get the most excited about. And, and once again, that's uh, the part that I'm most excited about this year. Um, I mean, every year, I've been doing this 10 years now, every year you kind of get a, an early peak when we do the call for papers and you you just see the volume of, of, of submissions that comes through. And, and every year that just keeps getting bigger. Uh, and every year our review board gets bigger to try to manage all the volume of calls call for papers submissions that we get um it's rigorous i mean it's really rigorous but you get like that that early insight into is this going to be a good year you know it, it, there's going to be some great great stuff here and um you know there's so many great um sessions i'm sure we'll, we'll dig into some of those as well but there's just a lot a lot this year uh, to get excited about in the conference um so that's good i am yeah excited about the conference expansions that we've done as well so these summit programs that we're running on the, on the tuesday prior to the main event um all go into some you know important topical areas uh and are geared a bit more towards a managerial audience right so the briefings are as you guys know very technical very in the weeds for the most part um our summit programs are by design going to be more targeted at a, a managerial and up um, audience. We've got some new ones happening this year. So we've always had the CISO Summit that's been around for about 10 years now, and that's always very popular, always sold out, and it's exclusive to CISOs. Um, this year, we're adding an AI Summit uh, into the mix, which is um, going to be very popular. Um, we're adding um, a, a summit on um, uh, innovators and investors, so really looking at you know, there's a there the money is flowing again back into cybersecurity uh, from an investment standpoint and startups um that's great to see great to hear so we really wanted to have a program this year that was really going to be for that part of the um the sort of you know cybersecurity ecosystem it's the the entrepreneurs it's the vcs it's the corporate development people it's the the cso's themselves the ones that ultimately will be buying these these solutions um so Innovators and Investor Summit, that's brand new. That's uh, happening on a Tuesday. I'm really excited about that. Uh, we have our Omdia Analyst Summit. That's really our own uh, analyst firm, Omdia, and their insights into what's happening more on the vendor side of things from a just a you know vendor developments uh, and, and key developments there. Um, so that's back again. We've got a new industrial controls summit that we're launching this year, really you know digging into the more of the you know operational technology side of things. Uh, SCADA systems, et cetera. So that's uh, that's brand new. Uh, we're bringing back our cyber insurance summit. So just, you know, again, a lot of um, great extensions to the main conference, the Black Hat briefings, which is uh, will always be sort of that very um, technical, cutting edge, research-based um, program that it's known for. Yeah, and then pretty much anybody I speak to uh, when I talk about the content at Black Hat, it, the feedback has always been really good, deep technical, research driven, no fluff. You're going you're gonna to learn something that's valuable and, and applicable to whatever program you're trying to run. And I, I love these summits as well because it, well, like the CISO summit, um, sadly, I don't get to go to those, but 
<laughs> no, I don't, I don't want to be a CISO. So I don't, I don't, I won't be able to go to those, but I guess the point I'm, I want to make is with some of the summits is you, you do up level them to me, to be higher level program oriented, business oriented, operationally oriented. And I think it's a good way for the two groups to come together, right? So the bottom up technical, tactical, operational mixing with the operational business, economical policy, that kind of stuff. And absolutely. Yeah. And yeah. I, mean, I, I need to, I need to get, get on with some of the a- analysts to uh, talk about what, what's going on at the analyst summit. A- absolutely. <laughs> there always a wealth of information there. Um, yeah. You bring up a, a good point, Sean. I mean, I think like, you know, AI is a good example. We've launched this new AI summit. Uh, we've had an AI track at, at, in, in the briefings for years, right? So it's not a new topic for Black Hat, but it's, there's a very different lens on the, the AI sessions that are going to find their way into the briefings program versus the uh, the AI summit, which, as you said, it's it's been up leveled. Um, there's a lot of big um, things to think through, um, you know, around AI. Uh, that that's what we really aim to address in the AI summit. Um, you know, it's protecting the AI. It's you know, how is AI being leveraged both by adversaries and by our vendors and our internal teams. Um, it's like a, a an AI, you know, arms race. Uh, who's going to be who's going to be quicker by leveraging uh, advances in AI? So there's a lot of sort of you know bigger picture things to discuss there. Th- that's never going to be sort of the type of content that we would put in the briefings, which is always really the, more of that technical deep dive um, uh, into the research. Yeah, and you mentioned how the focus on networking. I mean, that's that's why we go to. We go to conference, right? We, we, we go to chat with people, to reconnect, and to meet new one. And as time goes by, there's a lot of younger people than, than us, <laughs> which is a great thing. Um, but I, I like the fact you have also like a meet and greet with the speakers so people can get to know them. And then, of course, uh, keynotes and anything that stand out there. You know that's another question that will come from me, like who? Who is yeah. promoting and, and who else are you, are you, do you want to highlight? Yeah, this so is the, I, this is the name your favorite child. Spot. Name your favorite child. Oh, boy. <laughs> Not that way, um, but, you know, everybody is important. <laughs> I think that's probably another big um, development this year is I think we've taken some uh, different, you know, direction this year with our with our keynote program. Um you know, we, we generally have a traditional keynote, you know, the person that starts off the event with, you know, with the talk. Um, and this year, so it, it kind of goes, this year our, our key opening keynote is actually a panel discussion. So and it goes back to, and it's all on um, sort of defending democracy, right? Um, the big year for elections. And it's a big topic for, for us, you know, around the world, right? So this goes back to actually, uh, Jeff Moss, when he was um, introducing uh, Black Hat Asia in Singapore this past year, made the comment that this year over half of the world of democrac- democratized world will be going to the polls. So it's just it's an unprecedented thing where you've got so many con- big democracies um, going to the polls this year. Um, and you've also got sort of this like there's new and different threats to that dem- democratic process, right? And AI being being one of those, right? We're yet to see really how AI will be leveraged, you know, on top of the things that we've, you know, been seeing in, in elections around, you know, uh, disinformation, misinformation, you know, that sort of sort of thing. So uh, we the, we asked ourselves the question: Well, who's the who's the person that can really you know address this phenomenon that is you know we've got you know, half the world going to the polls, um, and concluded that there, that's that's not really a single person. It's really you know um, uh, it's a government by government you know issue. But we thought there's probably tremendous value in bringing some of the leaders across these different governments together to really talk about this as an issue. So we you know we've put together I think a fantastic. Um, you know, panel that I, I think I'm especially uh, excited to see how this one um, comes together. We're we're um, it'll be moderate a moderated panel. So we've got um, 
a reporter from AP, Christina Cassidy. So she's the person with the, with Associated Press that covers all of the national election and election security, you know, those sorts of things. So she's going to host it. Uh, we've got Jen Easterly, the CISA director for the United States. We've got Hans de Vries, chief cyber security and, and, and operations officer for the European Union. We've got uh, Felicity Oswald, CEO at the UK's National Cybersecurity Center. Um, so it's going to be, you know, three um, prominent leaders within their respective governments dealing with this um, in, a, in an unusual year. And I think that will be probably um, a, a different twist for Black Hat, but I hope really useful, uh, a useful way to kick off the conference. Yeah, yeah it's a really, really cool panel and uh, definitely caught my attention. And you, you, you mentioned Jeff as well. Um, who also has a keynote with uh, Moxie. Can you with tell Moxie. us a little bit? <laughs> yeah, tell us a little bit about what that's going to be about? Yeah, that's another uh, you know a little bit of a, a left turn for us. We don't usually do fireside chats um, as keynotes, but uh, we wanted this one to be a bit more discussion based. So you know, Moxie, of course, he's the the the, uh, the founder of Signal, uh, has played such a prominent role um and in with the signal protocol and really that's that's the protocol that is leveraged by a lot of the messaging apps facebook whatsapp you know google messenger etc all leverage that so he's one of those big thinkers um in privacy um and people want to hear from him because he's played such an instrumental role uh in the develop development of privacy across you know what a lot of the, the modern tech that we're all using today so really um you know, it's it's going to be a different format, more of a, a fireside chat with Jeff, where they can dig into some of the things that are on Jeff's mind uh, around privacy. You know, those trade offs between privacy and security uh, is a big one. Um, you know, you know how do we uh, how do we shape privacy topics in the future as well would be something that will be covered uh, as as well. Safeguarding personal information. Um, you know, in in this sort of modern era, uh, there's a lot of good topics there that we want to dig into and, and we're real excited to hear from moxie because he's not a guy that, that tends to be out um speaking on the public circuit much um so that's a nice addition to our lineup this year yeah just uh sean shared with me this morning a, a post from jeff uh, that was very very profound about political situations oh, yeah. and and protecting the election and uh, so i'm sure it's going to be it's going to be good and i love to see the fact that it's uh it's funny because we actually had another uh, speaker today um, that is going to be there, a black hat, and he's all about, it was about social politics and international relationship and how uh, different country grades from a cybersecurity stands and, and readiness and resilience. And, and so the, the fact that you also have Jen again talking on the main stage and you had the international cybersecurity director for the office of the president. So it, it, it's not just AI, you know, although I see Anne and, and Johnson and Sherry the Grippo talking about that. But it, the point is the complexity and the fact that cybersecurity touch all our life nowadays. Yeah. And I, I love to see how the the conference has always been ahead, of course, always been black hat ahead of the game. and and keep doing that. So um, I'd love to see that. Marco, are you, are you referring to, uh, th this session caught my attention as well. It's, um, it's the one that um, a gentleman from Harvard or some yes. a few folks from Harvard or yeah, mm -hmm. that caught my yeah, attention Fred, as well. Fred so hating. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm really interested to see what the, what the findings are in that one just yeah. for, for, for the audience. So this is, um, uh, you wouldn't tell us. Yeah, him. I mean, yeah. So you asked them. <laughs> we'll okay. Have, we'll have to no, we didn't, of course. No. So this, they're looking across the U.S., China, U.K., Germany, um, South Korea, Singapore, UAE. So, so big, you know, big countries, and yep. looking at their cybersecurity approach to national defense, um, and a bit of a, as I understand it, a bit of a grading system. Yep. on who's doing what well and who's you know who comes out on top so i think that one it's a super interesting topic but i think uh, more interesting for me will be hearing the you know the results from that so that's one i i plan to attend for sure yeah i think yeah. he's gonna be and, packed that one <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah that's a good one that's a good one um are there any tracks that because i mean when we when you just throw ai in the mix and and it kind of swallows up stuff we talk about election and and misinformation and kind of that big 
big bubble and it kind of swallows up stuff. How, how does some of the other tracks hold up? Um, yeah. Given some of those big things. And are there any new ones? Are there any that, that have fallen off that, uh, that get bundled up in somewhere else? Tell us, tell us about what's going on with the tracks. Yeah. The tracks kind of, kind of tend to morph a little bit. Not nothing major changes there, but I, I, I'm always sort of interested in this, this topic as well. Like, you know, as the program's coming together, where is the, where is the sort of concentration of research? Is it around, you know, mobile, you know, that's, we've, we've seen years where there's a lot of mobile, um, uh, talks. Um, I would say, you know, kind of just in reviewing, there's about a hundred, there's a hundred plus sessions, right? So it's a big, it's a big program always is, um, it goes, it goes wide, right? But I think you could certainly say that, you know, AI, yes, there's a lot of AI, but I'm, I'm actually very proud of the AI program because um, it's, it, you know, it is the most hyped thing right now in tech. But like, I think our review board did a great job of really pulling out some gems and um, providing some AI talks that are gonna be very, very useful and, you know, and necessary. So um, I'm excited by that. I think there was there was also quite a lot around cloud vulnerabilities. So as a, as a theme, at least that was my take on it this year, um, there seems to be a lot of that. Um, and that kind of ebbs and flows. Sometimes we get a lot of cloud. Sometimes we don't. Uh, a lot. A lot of times the cloud systems are. They tend to be a bit, you know, insular. Obviously, so we don't have a lot of insight. So it's to me, it's always nice when we get a good year of cloud talks because it means that the cloud, whether it's the cloud providers or the customers of the clouds, are talking more about what's what you know what customers need to be thinking about. And at this point, you know, most of our, our systems are, are running on cloud-based environments. So that's super critical. Um, and, you know, and there was one talk that caught my eye around just, you know, sort of not treating the cloud like a black box. Like you really do need to understand what's happening there from a security standpoint for your own, you know, enterprise as well. So um, I think that was, that was probably the other one that was the most interesting for me is just the number of, of cloud sessions. Mm -hmm. And, uh, my last question, uh, I don't know if Sean has one more, but he usually does, so I count on it. Of course. My last, is, it's, it's actually about uh, the startup spotlight competition, because it's, uh, it's a third year, and uh, I think uh, a, a nice little healthy competition is always a good thing, and especially when it highlights the up-and-coming uh, new solution and startup company. So uh, can you tell us something about that one? Yes. So we're going to up level the spotlight competition this year. As you said, it's our third year doing it. Um, and we're so each year we want to get it, you know, bigger, better more, and, and, and a more you know, prominent part of Black Hat. And I would say that's probably one of our biggest you know, areas of focus this year is really having a much more robust uh, program around the whole startup and investment ecosystem. So it starts with the uh, the innovators and investors summit, summit that we launched, right? So that's a full one day summit, really, you know, bringing together um, all of those consti constituents that care about that part of the cyber ecosystem. You know, it's the it's the innovators, the the entrepreneurs themselves, the VCs, the corporate development people that want you know the companies acquiring these these businesses, and it's the CISOs, you know, the actual practitioners that are. Um, that are the ones that are buying these solutions. So the Innovators and Investors Summit, and then we've got the Spotlight Competition happening that same day at night. We've up-leveled that by putting it in one of the, the a proper room versus it used to happen on the business hall. Uh, now it'll happen in a briefing room with a bigger production um, right after Innovators and Investors. And then of course, we've also always had the the startup zone on the floor. So really trying to you know build an entire program around that. And and they're all integrated. You know, the, the, the four finalists for the Spotlight competition are being given the chance to speak at the Innovators and Investors Summit. They are being given uh, complimentary space in the, in the startup zone on Black Hat's floor um, as winners for the Spotlight competition. So I think, um, yeah, definitely look for that overall arching program just to get bigger each year. We really want to dig into that. And again, as I mentioned earlier, especially as investment money is now flowing back into cybersecurity startups, which it, you know, it hadn't been for a while. Uh, so that's really good to see. So I want to, in my, my final question here, it is to the, the type of audience that we expect. Because over the past few months, I, I've had a lot of conversations where the CIO has been uh, a role that's come up quite a bit in connection with security. 
So I could, I could say they might be in the AI summit. They might find themselves in the CISO summit with, with their CISO peer, but talk to me a bit about kind of the, the, the business level. Do you, do you see attendees expanding beyond just peer security? So that's kind of the first part of the question. And then the other part is the, the level of experience with cybersecurity, maybe still in the same theme of, I mean, we saw bad stuff happen last week <laughs> that yeah. was from cyber impacting IT. So I, I think there's a, a broader or a deeper connection in, with IT and cybersecurity as well. So talk to me a little bit about the audience and the attendees beyond just pure cyber. And do you see much yeah. there? I think the the trend that we've seen is more um, not that that our cyber audience is broadening, but more that there's more people from IT that need to be um, more in tune with cybersecurity. Right? I, I I say this to the Blackett team all the time. Cybersecurity touches everything. Every facet of our modern life is affected by is is uh, uh, by cybersecurity, and so therefore um, it you know it it affects all sort of all jobs within the within the uh, the enterprise. So you're seeing more uh, people coming from the more of the IT side of the house that need to be absolutely plugged into what's happening in cybersecurity. So that's I, I see that as a good thing. You know that's sort of the long. Um, Arguing about argument about the lack of 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 co you know coordination cooperation between IT and and uh, and security and uh, and clearly that you know the results the the issue last week is a good example of that um, where they need to be more coordinated um, you know obviously um, there still is you know in in cybersecurity there still is a massive job gap um, so you know ISC squared puts out a really good uh, report on on jobs every year and even though the workforce is growing at this tremendous rate in cybersecurity the gap of un, you know, unfilled jobs is actually growing faster than the workforce itself so um, I think there's it's 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 more of that that you're seeing other people from other walks of life largely IT needing to come in and uh, and be a part of that cybersecurity workforce as well well, the universe is expanding, so we're not catching up with that. <laughs> <laughs> if that's an excuse, I don't know if we can apply there physics to, to cybersecurity, but anyway. Well, there we go. Uh, I'm, I'm no going to I'm close, apply physics. I'm gonna close with, with two shout outs because they're, they're always my favorite. The, the first is Arsenal. Uh, always a good collection yeah. of tools that, uh, that come from really smart people. And uh, the other is the knock. Uh, go. Go see the team in the NOC and see how how a very uh, yes. active network <laughs> is managed and protected. Grifter and team, I'm sure, uh, would love, love to see you there. So th those are my two shout outs to stuff we didn't talk about. Grifter yet, but, uh, and uh, and and Bart and and uh, yeah. and Steve Fink and and those guys are doing a. Um, uh, briefing again, uh, is, and they, it's, it's become one of the most popular sessions, right? It's the Tales from yeah. the Knock, um, where they're really looking at kind of some of the the, the, the actual activity from the week uh, and what they've been dealing with in defending Black Hat uh, from the world um, and probably from itself as well. Um, <laughs> so that's always a great a great one. And we always put that sort of towards the end of the week. It's a great way to round things off. Yeah. yeah. I love it. All righty then. It. Well, I'm I so guess. excited to uh, to be there and see everybody and to uh, see you, Steve, and hear some of these chats and conversations. And yeah, always a good time in Vegas uh, with the Black Hat team. So thank you for uh, thank you for pulling it together and uh, for sharing a few minutes with us to uh, to give us the highlights of this year's event. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for having me on, guys. And I'll look forward to listening to some of the other interviews as we lead up to the event. I always enjoy those. So thanks for for you know continuing to put those out and, and getting some good speakers on. Um, really enjoy it. Yeah, absolutely. Good stuff. And for everybody, stay tuned because as we have many before the event, we are actually starting to get pretty booked for the event itself. So. We're excited. We're going to be running around. And if you see us, just uh, wave and say hi. And uh, of course, Steve, I'm looking forward to say hi to you in person. Thank you, everybody. Subscribe. Stay tuned. If you cannot make it to Vegas, ITSP Magazine is the way to enjoy <laughs> Black Cat as well, at least in, from our own perspective. But get there. It's worth it. <laughs> Take care, uh, everybody. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.